Hey everybody, thank you for listening to the WhatCast. Mike, in, That's recent, who I am. <laughs> in recent news with the, the disturbance, I don't even know, I don't want to say disturbance, that's that's an understatement. With all the stuff in the news about... Are you referring to the clusterfuck in the Middle East, Mateo? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Let's, let's just call it for what it is. It's a goddamn clusterfuck, and that's that's about it. Right, it, it's... It's a mess over there now with, uh, for a lot of reasons, but there's a lot of things that's going around that, that made me like think the herp, the herp dogs is always going around. Never forget that kid, especially you youngsters. Wrap it up. <laughs> there's some stuff going on and some things that I've read that just made me think of Nostradamus and his predictions of war. There was an old a presentation i think it was called nostradamus the man who could see the future and it was done in 1979 i actually found it on youtube so i'll put it in the show notes if you guys want to watch it but it's like a, the go-to thing for nostradamus for people our age a lot of people i know have seen it but i watched the shit of it when i was a kid and it scared the shit out of me because they go into a lot of stuff but they focus on uh world war three and the end of the world and they just there's a part to where what he writes is so shocking they just say we're not going to interrupt we're just going to let this play out for a while you just listen to what he says and it was it was pretty scary but uh, we've decided just for shits and giggles to take a look at the writings of Nostradamus and kind of compare them uh, to modern events and see if anything matches up because I remember when September 11th happened There's a lot of shit on the internet. I'm sure you remember, Mike, where people are like, oh, Nostradamus predicted this. And and then a year later, there was all these, there was all these reports about how Nostradamus never said anything like that. And we'll, we'll get into September 11th, but uh, it just seems like a, this is the first time in a long time to where bad things happening in the news made me think of Nostradamus when it comes to war in the Middle East, because he spoke a lot about that. Did you get a feeling of, of that? Well, Here's here's the thing that that I w- I would like to start off the show with, and that's I know next to nothing about Nostradamus. I'm I've never really studied him. I'm aware that he made some predictions, maybe, but every time I read anything about him, they just seem really vague. Like you can apply anywhere, you could apply it to any number of events or people. So. You're going to be like the expert here, and I'm going to be sitting here the whole time going, Ooh, oh, you don't say. Tell me more. (laughs) Things of that nature. All right, cool. Yeah. I I did a lot of research in in getting ready for the show. Uh, There's been a lot of people talking about being freaked out about what's going on and and the Third World War starting, and and I instantly thought of Nostradamus. So I I got a few books and cross-referenced it with a few websites and and stuff like that and and that's that's a good place to start is with how you interpret Nostradamus's writings. He was born in 1503 in France and he was a doctor but uh, at some point in his life he started to get visions and and wrote them down. Visions of the future, things that predicted all sorts of stuff. And uh but we'll we'll get into how he wrote them down and and why in a second but he wrote his predictions in a very weird way. They were almost like riddles. And and like I said, this is for many reasons, and some of them might even be true. If it's because he didn't want to be called a witch or, or stuff like that, I've heard that excuse is that he had to hide them so he wasn't persecuted for being a devil worshiper. But he was well-known mystic and prophet, so I, I don't agree with that. But you can pretty much pick whatever reason you want. But for the time that they were written, they all could be true, but... He himself states in a letter to King Henry Henry II that his writings are, quote, composed rather out of a natural instinct, accompanied by a poetic fur, than according to the strict rules of poetry. Most of them have been integrated with astronomical calculations corresponding to the years, months, and weeks of the regions, countries, 
and most of the towns and cities of all Europe, including Africa and part of Asia, where most of all these coming events are to transpire. And he goes on to say, Indeed, someone who would do well to blow his nose may reply that the rhythm is as easy as the sense is difficult. That, O oh, most humane king, is because most of the prophetic quatrains are so ticklish that there is no making way through them, nor is there any interpreting of them. So, by his own admittance, he wrote this shit uh, to sound like nonsense. And I, I had to laugh when I was reading a little bit more on that, because as I took notes, I wanted to put this shit in order. The stuff, uh, at least by, when we talk about the subject of the subject matter of these predictions, I wanted to put the events he's speaking about in chronological order. And when I would go to go read his quatrains and centuries, uh, I would have to jump around all over the place. I mean, he has, I think it's like a, I forget how many centuries now. My brain is just a, a jumble of all his writings at this point. But I would have to jump from the first book to the seventh book to the first, the fifth book to the 19th book just to find all his quatrains and put them in order. And I, I wondered why, but he, he even went so far as to when he was done writing all this shit before he took it to publish, he grabbed the stack of writings and threw them into the air and then put them in order that way. So they're completely scrambled. It'd be very difficult to put anything in order. Uh, but with him writing like that presents us with like a big problem. So since they're all in a riddle like manner, they can kind of only be deciphered through interpretation. And, and these writings can be taken many ways and applied to many things in history, the past, the present, and the future, all throughout time. So there are a few definitive interpretations of his work, and we'll stick to those interpretations when we need to, because uh, there's there, for the most part, they're agreed upon. There's just some discrepancies in translation. So... Uh, Basically, the title of, of what everybody agrees these predictions are about will explain the interpretation. But uh, for the sake of uh, entertainment, I've always wanted to read Nostradamus's Quatrains. And it, like in that video I talked about, they had uh, <laughs> this uh, actor read the parts. And I always loved him. I thought he was the perfect voice for Nostradamus. So I sprinkled a little Donald Trump on some uh, on JFK and added a little bit of Dom <laughs> DeLuise, and I think I got the perfect Mr. Thomas. <laughs> what an odd mix of characters. <laughs> I, when, I, when I recorded it, I laughed. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> that's like Dom DeLuise with Donald Trump and Marlon Brando. That's, that's weird. Oh, my God. This is going to be fantastic. <laughs> and there's a lot of them, guys. So if it's annoying, to me it's annoying. But it, it, So what, what I've done is I will I have pre-recorded reading the what's considered uh, like the original translation the most literal translation because it's written in old old french and then i for some of them most of them actually i have the quote again and a lot of them are the same but they're they have a couple phrases that might make it easier to understand or maybe even link it to what this prediction is supposed to mean and those mike will read like i said there's a couple people who've written in they're considered to be a, a kind of a stronger backbone of what these interpretations mean, but these aren't uh, like despot grasp to try to link his his writings to things that have happened in the past to fortify his ability to predict the future. I mean, to to be able to decipher his stuff, it takes a lot of research into historical events and and dates and names and astrologies and places and much more. So they might sound weird, and I know a lot of people consider. Nostradamus's predictions to be mumbo jumbo and more vague than a John Edwards reading, but there are some folks who've spent decades linking his predictions to plausible things and events. So we're going to have fun looking at them. And just as an example, if you hear this quote, They will think they have seen the sun at night when they see the pig half man. Noise, chance, battle, fighting in the heavens perceived. And one will hear brute beast talking. So if you hear... <laughs> <laughs> this took like four hours to do all these. Oh, God. Uh, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, 
<laughs> I hope that's how he sounded for real. Uh, me too. I hope to God. It sounds, if you watch that old 1979 documentary, I think I did a good is, job is sounding that like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Uh, but when you, when you hear a quote like that, it doesn't make any sense to you, and it really shouldn't. But the fact that decades of research have led some to believe that seeing this quote, sun at night could be the detonation of the nuclear bombs dropped on Japan, and the quote, pig half man is the description of the gas mask that pilots wore at the time. And the noise from the heavens could have been bombers flying and brute beast talking, the loud and static field radio communications uh, is very interesting. But uh, like, like I said, it's all on how you take it until you do some research or make connections yourself. There's some quotes that you can apply to modern day events, but it's weird. It's, it's almost like you have to match what he's saying to something that's already happened to understand it. It'll help you understand it better. Like in this quote, The exiles are deported to the islands when the new leader proves even crueler. There are murderers. Two at a time they will be questioned until they cannot stop talking. So you kind of have to look on where you can apply that. And like, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that didn't mean shit. But uh, it's easy to link that quote to Guantanamo Bay today. But I think I think that this could be applied to any place that is i mean even even the term island could be metaphorical most definitely but that that's like a that's like an example of a good connection and it, again like i'm saying it's just it just kind of depends on how impressive those connections are to you see to me like none of his things really match i mean they could match any number of things they're they're all vague enough there's nothing specific like stating the, exactly what is going to happen it's it's always vague things that really depending on what's going on at the time you could you could pick and choose and be like look nostradamus predicted this because this happened and it, it, it you know it, it's it's all open to interpretation and and the other the other way that i look at it people would point like to, so this one for instance exiles are deported to islands when the new leader proves even crueler, there are murders two at a time that will be questioned until they cannot stop talking. Is that metaphor or is that real? Like, and then there's some that mix the two that, that like, well, that's metaphor, but if you see this, this is exactly what happened. But why would he use metaphor and then tell exactly what happened as well? Like it, it doesn't make a lot of sense that they were exact predictions. Right, and you make a good point because there's some times where he's downright factual. No, this color, this number, and and that comes to pass. And there's some times where he's extremely vague. But like, I was surprised to read that in that that letter to King Henry because I, I had never come across that. And uh, I always I always kind of went with the whole he kind of had to hide it so he didn't seem like a a cuckoo bird. But he was a, he was well known for predicting things by everybody basically. So he wasn't trying to hide it per se. I I don't understand the reasoning for him writing it that way. In to to see him to to see him admit that some of this shit's never going to be able to be figured out because it's written so fucking dumb. I mean, the reason why he was writing the king in the first place was the last few books or the last few writings he had. He didn't know where to put them, and he wanted to leave them to the king because he figured he would know what to do with them. So I, I some some things are vague. Some things are weird, but we'll, we'll get into some examples that might lend more credit or discredit. So, But before we get into his writings, we wanted to say that some of the terminology may seem antiquated or even a little off-color, and some of the statements uh, made in his predictions may be offensive to certain groups of people, countries, or religions. And uh, Again, we must remind you that these are not our opinions, our feelings, our ideas. We don't mean to offend anybody by repeating quotes from the 1500s, our feelings and political matters are irrelevant. But for the record, our hope is for peace everywhere, always. And, and uh, yeah, we don't, we don't, we're not, this is not what we think. And the terminology used is we, some of what we might not agree with. So please don't take any offense. We don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. It could be, I mean, we're talking about war in the Middle East. It could be touchy and religion is involved with that. So we don't mean to bum anybody out. Rah, rah. 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, knowing what you think about how vague he could be, I kind of, I kind of wondered what you think if you came across his writings, you didn't know he was some type of future seeing prophet. Would you take it as writings as like a psychopath? And why, why was his writings so uh, profound for so long? I wouldn't think he was a psychopath. I would just think he was a weird poet. <laughs> Some avant garde like, like hipster. Yeah, it's just just that's yeah. I'd be like, oh, these are weird. And honestly, probably most of them wouldn't even catch my attention. The the half pig man would because I would instantly think man bear pig. Like, oh my god. <laughs> they knew about man bear pig even back then. Just as a couple examples of him actually succeeding in predicting things, I, I've actually mentioned the black Boar, white boar story on here before, but I actually yeah. found a uh, writing of this. And you want to read this account, Mike, in, in their own phrasing? I will. I will read it in the exact phrasing, but I will not do a, a, a voice for that. That's okay. You got to get ready for something like that. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I will not be bringing a character voice to this. You're just getting me reading in the form of some old-timey person that wrote about it. Nostradamus was a guest of Lord Florinville at the Castle of Fame, where he was attending professionally on Lord Florinville's mother. The doctor and his host were crossing the courtyard where two little pigs, a black one and a white one, were running about, as was the casual custom of livestock in those days. Lord Florinville said to the doctor, I suppose... You can even foretell the fate of those two pigs. Certainly I can, replied the doctor. We shall eat the black one, and the wolf will eat the white one. Lord Florinville saw a chance for a good joke on his guest. He privately instructed the cook to roast the white pig for supper. That evening, while they were feasting on succulent young pork, his lordship, with, with huge mirth, told Nostradamus that he was eating the white pig. This the prophet vigorously denied. The pig, he said, was the black one, as he had foretold. The cook was finally called to settle the argument. Yes, said the cook fearfully, the pig was black. The white one had been killed and prepared as directed. But as she had stepped out of the kitchen before putting the pig in the oven, and a tame wolf had stepped in and was doing himself very well on the pig when the cook returned. Not supposing it would make any difference, the black one had been quickly killed and served exactly as predicted. The episode occurred long before the writing of the prophecies and certainly indicates that the doctor's uncanny faculty must have been well known to a select number of his friends and patients. So there's one example of him being successful at predicting things. No, if, if I may be so bold. Yes, sir. I, w I would like to shit all over this story and... and <laughs> say that it's a complete fabrication and this never happened and there's one reason and one reason alone that i believe this and that's because you're supposed to let meat cure you don't kill something and then instantly cook it everybody knows that and nobody would enjoy that if they had just freshly killed this pig when the other one was eaten that that doesn't make any sense I don't know. I think there's many a hunter who would who would beg to differ that fresh pig would be not as good as cured pig. Farmers farmers and hunters that are listening, if you could please chime in and and let us know which which side of this you fall on, please I would do. really appreciate it. Yeah. Because I've I've never I've never heard of anybody killing an animal and eating it instantly. You've got to you've got to let it drain. You've got to let the meat cure and age for a little bit before you can cook it. And that that's why when a hunter kills a deer after he, he bleeds it out, he hangs it. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's let's try this one on precise. This one's about the prediction of a pope. Why don't you read the quote on this one? Okay. All right. Let's let's see let's see what this Nostradamus guy's up to this time. <laughs> The other incident happened during his stay in Italy. In the neighborhood of Ancona, along the road, Nostradamus passed a group of Franciscan friars. Among them was a young lad, a country boy, who had but recently left his father's farm to join the order. On seeing him, Nostradamus dismounted from his mule, went up to him and dropped on his knee before him. 
The astonished monks asked why he did this. Because I must kneel before his holiness, he told them. They were probably more astonished than ever, and it seems that little attention was paid to such an unlikely forecast. But it was remembered by those present, and told by them years after. Oh shit. But it was remembered by those present, and told by them, when years after Nostradamus had died. That country boy, Felice Peretti, became Pope Sixtus V. Huh? Huh? This again is all well and good, but where's the proof? Like this, this, for one, when do we even know for real when this, when this anecdote was, was written? For two, where's Nostradamus's prediction of this? And for three, this clearly was written after Felice became Pope. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to backfill the story to say, oh, oh, Nostradamus was, I want proof, God damn it. Did did Pope Sixtus ever talk about this? Was I, this was this ever backed up by the Pope? I don't. I do not know. That would be very interesting to find out, though. I bet it wasn't because I bet it's phony baloney. <laughs> All right, th- God, I'm such a fucking killjoy. <laughs> what we're talking? There's about- no magic in the world. Everything sucks. <laughs> I don't really believe that, but I don't. I don't buy into these Nostradamus shenanigans. Yeah, well, we're talking about like a mystic old French guy, so we'll, we we got to allow for some goofiness. Yeah, I think he was just a French weirdo. All right, so a couple of other things that people have attributed him to correctly predicting the future is, like I mentioned before, the nine eleven attacks, and like you said, you remembered people saying that Nostradamus had predicted this, and I distinctively remember reading things how that was debunked that he never said anything about it, but I found two that are said to be predictions of just that. Here is the first one. Earth-shaking fire from the center of the earth will cause tremors around the new city. Two great rocks will war for a long time. Then Erethusa will redden a new river. So in his writings, they've been able to decipher that the new city is New York from what they can gather. Or what they guess, or what they just say. Well, this is clearly what it is because look what happened, right? And like you can do that with all his stuff. It's but like, yeah, I mean, I mean, if earth shaking fire from the center of the earth will cause tremors around the new city. New is a relative term. New in comparison to what? There's there's no indication of uh, what the uh, where this is g- geographically speaking. We could hear earth-shaking fire from the center of the earth will cause tremors around the new city. Two great rocks will war for a long time, and Arethusa will redden a new river. So this could really just be two mountains or or, uh, two volcanoes causing fire from the earth, lava, which will redden a new river, maybe a river of lava perhaps? See what I just did? I just turned this whole fucking thing into a volcanic eruption. The new city was built up around the... They're, they're talking about Hawaii. That's what they're talking about right now. They're talking about Hawaii when Hawaii was exploding from the volcanoes like last year or whatever it was. See, it, it, it's, it's all in how you apply it. All right, Joe Nickel. They, they, say, they say new city, so instantly they're like, Oh, new city? That's New York City. He just didn't say York. He said new city, <laughs> therefore it's the... Fuck off. He's saying a new city. New being relative... The, You're the one the putting new the significance. City. The new city. Yeah, the new city. But new by comparison to what? Any city is new compared to mountains. Well, he later and, he he talks about the, how the new city is in the west and and other things he will attribute to. You know what else is in the west? Hawaii. <laughs> so, All there right. you go. All right, let's listen to this one that pertains to <laughs> September 11th. Ready? Garden of the world near the new city in the path of the hollow mountains. It will be seized and plunged into the tub, forced to drink waters poisoned by sulfur. That that sounds more and more like Superman's dad to me now, and I'm disappointed. (laughs) Yeah. So, this one, please explain how this is how this is nine eleven. Okay, let me. I have the book. Other than New City and Hollow Mountains being fucking skyscrapers. Other than that. I am going to cite one of the books 
here that I did research in. And this, again, please this, do. This is not my interpretation. This is uh, a common one. Uh, it says, quote, destruction of the Twin Towers will traumatize the people of the United States. There will be many long term effects of the tragedy, and it will poison relations between the U.S. and Islam. That's what they get from that quadrain. Okay. Well, I think they're just kind of putting things together here. Admittedly, admittedly, that's how they do it with his writing. I mean, the the Garden of the of the World near the New City. What does that? E- how does that relate to New York City? Other than there's there's a Central Park and that's the Garden. Of the, uh, fuck off! In the path <laughs> of the Hollow Mountains, like that. That's so vague. That could be anything. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could be skyscrapers yeah sure. hollow mountains that's i mean that's pretty specific that's odd there's i mean that's he could have said cavern or something like that if or he wanted. again it could be volcanoes good but he could have said volcano no because he's writing poetry god damn it he's gotta he's gotta it, use that he would have said the fire mountain no because hollow mountain sounds way better because maybe it's not an active <laughs> volcano True. Very good point. Very good point but then it coughs up its fucking volcanic ash and that poisons the water <laughs> All right, the next quote, I, I just found this one funny. Uh, this this is supposed to be about Hillary Clinton, and this is supposed to and, be... Okay, be, before you read this one about <laughs> Hillary Clinton, clearly, clearly whoever wrote that book hates Hillary Clinton, and that's the only reason that they're a treat, because there's nothing here, nothing at all, that, that relates back to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but... Unless you hate Hillary Clinton and you're just like, let me find something that Nostradamus said that is negative about Hillary Clinton. Okay, let's let's but, okay let's play the so quote from there. Please, please proceed. Yeah, yeah. Then we'll look up uh, an interpretation. Okay. Come on, phone. You can do it, baby. I love you. Great exertions to the north by a man woman to vex Europe and almost all the universe. The two eclipses will be put into such a route that they will reinforce life or death for the Hungarians. Oh, okay. please explain this. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Okay. It says here, Hillary Clinton, having become the first ever female president of the United States, proceeds to annihilate much of Eastern Europe. And in, this is dated to have taken, should have taken place in 2015. And that's one thing I will say about Nostradamus. He sucks at dates sometimes. There's, there's like a, there's another legend, I think, one I mentioned. How convenient. <laughs> sometimes he gets it right, and sometimes he doesn't. He's a goddamn genius. It's 50-50 every time. I mean, white pig, black pig. I mean, he had... Yeah, he had one. flip a goddamn coin. That's <laughs> Yeah. That's about it. Okay, and there's... I got one more of things that are supposed to have come true. In no, it. no, no. No, don't, don't be glossing over this Hillary Clinton. <laughs> this makes no fucking sense. How is this Hillary Clinton... And for and for two, if it was Hillary Clinton, then this proves that he's full of shit because Hillary Clinton wasn't president. True. Uh, the only thing, honestly, I think the only reason why is the man woman. It is. That's why it's because of he her business suits woman, too. Because and, yeah, yeah, and and the guy who wrote this book hates Hillary Clinton, and that's <laughs> and that's it. There, there's nothing here that relates to Hillary Clinton at all. I also read an interpretation to where it it. it called for it being her and that the two eclipses that will put be put into such a route was how she'll become so power hungry that she will be brokering for things that will cause life and death for for people for Hungarians she's got beef with people when, from that when part has of the Hillary world. Clinton ever had beef with Hungarians who, who I'm I have no comment about any Clinton moving on the next quote I <laughs> The next quote. I, I don't want to be put on their kill list nope. if I talk shit about the Hungarians. Nope. Uh, the Catholic scandal. This is predicted to have taken place in 2017. Here's that quote. After the files the ass drivers burned, they will be obliged to change diverse garbs. Those of Saturn burned by the millers, except the greater part which will not be covered. The only reason they chose this is because ass drivers. <laughs> No, I actually read another translation to where they, this is where they will be obliged. They say ass pounders? <laughs> is is that the other translation? No, it's uh, where they say they will be obliged to change their garbs. It it was translated to uh, uh, obliged to uh, like cease uh, 
vile activity. And it was it was an even well, that, that's a pretty significant difference in translation there. Yeah, but I I think that's part of his poem shit. It's 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 like a demonstrate changing the clothes is changing habit. It's just how, his wordplay, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But that's and, just one example. And what about the what about Saturn? Those of Saturn burned by the Millers. I have. What do, what, I mean, if it's a cult of Saturn then it wouldn't even be the Catholic Church. It would be pagans, most likely. And why are millers burning pagans? Let's see here what this summary says. Ready? Seeking to avert a catastrophe, the Pope defrocks a number of prominent uh, schismatics. There is a real danger of the fundamental rift in the Roman Catholic Church if matters are not quickly brought to order. Yeah, I don't know. I... I to me, it's not believable. All right, Mike, then let's let's get fun with it. Let's move on to the Antichrist. Maybe you'll like these. I, I always love a good Antichrist prophecy. <laughs> so this one was a warning for 2010, and it's called Advanced Warning of the Antichrist. Let's listen to that quote. Take it away, Dom DeLuise. Stained with murder and enormous adulteries, great enemy of the entire human race. Who will be worse than his grandfathers, uncles, or fathers? Hell, fire, water, bloody and inhuman. That sounds pretty antichristy to me. I don't know about antichristy, but it, it sounds like it could have been any number of warlords. Ruthless, yeah, ruthless dictators, warlords, whatever you want to go by. I mean, you you could apply that to so many people that have been on this earth between Nostradamus's time and our time. I can I can agree with that. Let's move on to the next one which is for the the predicted for the year 2032 and it's called the birth of the third antichrist. In Montreal shall be born I fear one who shall rule over bank account and vault. He'll raise an army from Milan's frontier. Favina and Florence strain of men and gold. He's born in Montreal. I'm assuming this is France, not Canada. And they're going to rule over the bank accounts of everybody. And he will raise an army from Milan. See, but, I mean, this one's pretty straightforward. Is it, So, why is this one straightforward and the others are metaphorical? And, again, we, there's there's nothing... This this one, I would say, is the, the closest prediction... Um, the, 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 the closest one, but you this mean, you one mean clearest message. Yeah. Yeah. The one that we could actually see if, if it was around this date. So he, he predicted this was going to be in, in 2032. So I guess we got to wait another 12 years or so, but you know, conveniently sometimes his dates don't work. So we'll have to look for somebody who was born in France that takes over the international bank accounts or banks. You know, it's it's going to be someone that takes over banks. Okay. This is, uh, again, for 2032, birth of the third Antichrist. Milk, frog's blood prepared in Dalmatia. Conflict given, plague near Treglia. A great cry will sound through all Slavonia. Then a monster will be born near and within Ravenna. Okay, this is going to start where... I have quotes from another book, and it, it has more simpler phrasing, and Mike will read those. Mike, you want to read this one? And again, they're very similar, but there's just a couple words that might make it easier, too. Yeah. In the other book, it says, Milk and the blood of frogs flows in Dalmatia. Battle is joined. There is a plague near Balness. Wailing will echo through enslaved Slovenia when a monster is born in and near Ravenna. So... It's the same prediction as the other year, and we've got two different places where this guy's supposed to be born. So is he talking about two different antichrists? Or maybe he's not talking about antichrists at all. Maybe he's just talking about other people. Well, see, th these the first quote in this quote is part of something that's called Birth of the Third Antichrist, and there's three presages, I believe. And uh, so I, I think the first one's the initial birth, and the other is further activity of what he's going to do i don't think this is his second birth so so it's he was born in montreal but it, 
but Ravenna is where he becomes the evil monster? Could be. Okay. All right. I'm back on board. I'm enjoying the story. Here's part three. When the eclipse of the sun will then be, the monster will be seen in full day. Quite otherwise will one interpret it. High price unguarded. None will have foreseen it. In English, it says, At the total eclipse of the sun, the monster will be seen in broad daylight. He will be misinterpreted. None will have foreseen the great cost. So th- this sounds like like revelation type stuff. It sure does. And especially with the uh, taking over of the banks and things like that. Uh, to me, this just sounds like he's taking creative license with with the book of Revelation. Hmm. Okay. Now this one is entitled Birth of the Third Antichrist, just that. And this is for the year 2035. This may be the birth of a second antichrist. That's what I think this one is. From the very depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the east. So what he, what he really was, was trying to say is from deep in the western part of Europe, a child will be born to poor parents. Do you want to do the multitude with this his tongue? What? Is that really what it says? <laughs> Whoops, that's a me. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me look, I'll look that up real quick. Do you want Do you want to do the multitude with your tongue, little boy? <laughs> no, I don't. Too bad the prophecy says you will. Flex that jaw, boy. Flex that jaw. <laughs> 43. Okay. The noise of his reputation. Like this, just that, it makes it so much better. This little boy is turning into a mouth whore for the populace of the Eastern Kingdom. They're like, it's supposed to say, he- I don't want to do the multitude with my tongue. It doesn't matter. A crusty old man says you must, and so you must. On your knees, little boy, and do the multitude with your tongue. Don't forget to. Tongue punch the dirt star. <laughs> dirt star. <laughs> oh my god. Kiss the mud crab. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> it's supposed to say he will seduce the multitude with his tongue. <laughs> it's just as good. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we leave all that in? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Christ! Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then the noise of his reputation will grow in the Eastern Kingdom. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's what Jesus. that's the reputation. Oh my God, Nostradamus, you creepy son of a bitch! <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a couple of beeps at least if it's staying. <laughs> I don't think we need to beep it. Come on. Oh, God. Who knows? This day and age, man. (laughs) Yeah. We'll be a pro-pedophilia podcast by the end of the week. I didn't think about that. Uh. (laughs) Then then it will be so. (laughs) (sighs) Got another one for the, the third Antichrist. And this is just called the third Antichrist. And again... For a different time. This is for 2075. Long awaited, he will never return in Europe. He will appear in Asia. One of the league issued from the great Hermes. And he will grow over all the kings of the East. Okay, and Mike? The eagerly awaiting one will never return to Europe, but will appear in Asia. One of the confederacy dissented from great Hermes, he will grow above all other kings of the Orient. This one's pretty specific too, right? I mean, he sounds like he's talking about somebody who's going to come to power and take shit over. Yeah, I, but I mean, if you're creating a narrative, then that's what he would do, right? Right. Well, let's move on to the second part of, of this quadrant. It's uh, for 2077, so the same character a few years later. The Antichrist very soon annihilates the tree. Twenty-seven years his woe will last. The unbelievers are dead, captive, exiled, with blood. 
human bodies, water and red hail covering the earth. And a mic. See, th- this is Revelation. The third Antichrist will soon be annihilated. His war will have lasted for 27 years. The heretics are either dead, captive, or exiled. Human blood reddens the water that covers the earth in hell. Like, this is taken right out of Revelation. Yeah. At, the, at this point, he's... Like, this... this I'm, I'm calling bullshit again. Like, this... He clearly grew up in the time of Christianity, and he is borrowing heavily from the book of Revelation and just writing poetry in the form of prophecy or or making it sound like it's a form of prophecy. But it's just he's just writing poetry about Revelation, that's all. Okay. All right, let's uh we're going to step into the realm of war now. What Nostradamus talks about war. And this is prophesized for the year 2043 and it's the start of what they call the religious wars. Arms will be heard clashing in the sky. That very same year, the Divine One's enemies. They will want unjustly to discuss the Holy Laws. Through lightning and war, the complacent one put to death. In other words, weapons of war will scream in the sky. That same year, even holy men will become enemies. They will unfairly attempt to suppress the sacred law. True believers will die by war and shock. This still sounds like Revelation. Agreed. And, you know, how how the uh, enemies of God will be many and the faithful will be few. And the the ones in power and the majority will look to overthrow the laws of, of God. And a war will come about as a result. What's it, what The tribulation, I believe it's called. See, to me, you know, it sounds like revelations. And the only thing that makes it kind of seem like a religious war to me that would be relevant for this time period that he's predicting this for would be the mention of holy laws and stuff like that. And that's when people think about holy laws, yeah. they think of Sharia law in the Middle East. And so I think that just lends to the thought. But that's also talked about in Revelation, how the followers of the Antichrist will seek to destroy the faithful of God and that the faithful of God will be few. Their enemies will be many. So, I mean, that's... If you if you really think about that, that's a religious war because it's the ones in power um, killing the few that are not in power any longer. Hmm. So it's I don't it's it's just sounds like he's doing fan fiction for for Revelation. All right, let's do the next one, part two of religious wars. Sorry, guys, there's more recordings. If it's annoying, trust me, it's. Uh... It makes it more funny, really. During the appearance of the bearded star, the three great princes will be made enemies. Struck from the sky, peace earth quaking, Po, Tiba overflowing, serpent placed upon the shore. When the shooting star appears, the three great princes will fall out. <laughs> <laughs> fall out. They'll fall right out. <laughs> <laughs> they do it. that's what happens when the shooting star appears they just fall <laughs> world peace will falter struck from the sky both Tiber and Poe will overflow and a serpent will be placed in their banks so uh, I don't know yeah that one's weird are the great princes the, the antichrist and the two beasts of the apocalypse ooh could be huh and if they in Revelation it talks about Lucifer being cast out and falling to earth. Lucifer is also known as the Morning Star. Mm. And here we have a bearded star, but a shooting star as well. <sighs> Three great princes will be made enemies. That's just that could be conflict, right? That's what a vice president. Yeah, could be anything. Hmm. Well, in 2044, he writes of chemical warfare. Now, this one I'm interested to hear your breakdown on, Mike, because it's, it's got some interesting wording. By night, the rainbow will appear for Nates. By marine arts, they will stir up rain. In the Gulf of Arabia, a great fleet will plunge to the bottom. In Saxony, a monster will be born of a bear and a sow. Man, bear, pig. Yeah. This is the prediction of man, bear, pig. And Dio. The band? 
<laughs> yeah, because it's just a rainbow with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one's pretty grim, though, man. I mean, this sounds like a this sounds like chemical warfare to me. Really? Yeah, rainbow in night. By night, the rainbow will appear. And by marine arts was that's to me that's a fucking uh, aircraft carrier battleship. Stir up rain, shooting a missile into the sky, hitting another fleet that will plunge to the bottom of the sea, being sunk maybe, and that's gonna piss off somebody in Saxony. A monster will be born. A... And then Man Bear Pig comes out. Yeah, and he joins the fight. <laughs> Fuck. Can you read the 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 English? Yeah, part? a rainbow will appear by night near Nades. Seafaring men will call up artificial rain. A great fleet will be fused in the Arabian Gulf. In Saxony, a monster will be born of a bear and a sow and a man, and he will be half man, <laughs> half bear, <laughs> half pig. Uh, so there, it's not much expansion on what they're what it could mean there. I mean, it's just what you could have deciphered from what the original yeah, one said. And, and I, I mean, a rainbow at night could be anything. It could be aurora borealis. You know, maybe it's appearing Ooh. lower than normal because that looks like a rainbow at night. It could be explosions, could be fireworks. Very true. All right. So now we're going to move on to more scarier stuff. And uh, there is a couple. Scarier than man bear pig teaming up with Dio to take over the universe? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. You just, Mateo. There is a couple more dumb quotes of me reading. So I apologize. But we're going to move into the area of World War Three. And if recent events in the news have startled you all and you're a total believer of Nostradamus, do not worry, for he has predicted World War III to start in 2055. There's been other predictions that he has made. There's something he calls World War III, the Great War is a separate war, the Global War is a separate war, and some say that he predicted that to start in... Uh, <laughs> so so these are all, all just different things. All, all different wars, there. yes, okay. throughout time. Okay. And uh, so, okay, Nostradamus. <laughs> Nostradamus, okay. <laughs> he likes drama. He likes problems, doesn't he? All right, so here we go. Uh, 2055, World War Three. The horrible war which is being prepared in the West. The following year will come the pestilence, so very horrible, that young, old, nor beast, blood, fire, mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and France. <laughs> what the fuck? That's his <laughs> just no just just that last part. Blood, fire, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter in France. And that's Dio's influence is on his writing. It's getting more metal. <laughs> just, pla- just imagine that over some sixteenth yeah. notes, fucking some some driving guitars <laughs> and fierce drum beats. So uh oh. read the the quote there for that one. The horrible war being prepared in the West will be followed the next year by a plague so terrible in its effect that it spares neither young, old, nor animal. Blood, fire, mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and France! <laughs> That's him uh, doing his astrology shit and for timing and stuff and matching it up, which they are able to do with some of his writings. See? I don't want that to be the case. I just want it to be like just random thought diarrhea. <laughs> just like, you know what? There's blood and there's fire. Fire reminds me of mercury. And Mars is there. And Jupiter is there. And they're all having a party in France. That would be awesome. Yeah. But this 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 quatrain, man, this one's pretty straightforward. There's no mincing words with this one, I think. I mean, the horrible war which is being prepared in the West, and then pestilence, so very, very horrible. So are, are all of these that we're reading, are they all part of the same thing? Like, was, was he putting them all together like a, like a, a continue, continuing story or continuing prediction? No, or no. were these done at like separate times, released at separate times? They're all done and released. Since, I don't know if his books were all released at once. There's a 12 centuries, which were books, and there's some, they had 100 quotes in them each, quatrains each. So, But that's what I was saying in the beginning, is that when he, he, he wrote them in order, but then mixed them up when publishing. So you're not going to find the quotes for the Antichrist in a row like that. You're going to have to look all over the fucking place. Because he mixed it all up so weird. Well, that's inconsiderate. It is. Like I say, he threw the papers in the air and whatever order he gathered them in was how they were published. Man, what a dick. (laughs) All right. Now we're moving to warning of future war. 
Warning of future war. Robots. So it's just like, yeah, robots and laser beams, man. I, I wish. Pew, but, pew, pew, pew. This is called for 2063. Oh, yeah, this is this is prime robot war territory right here. Right. He's going to be talking about mechanical fucking man and and wands that spit light and disintegrate flesh. I, I got a feeling. Oh, you might be right. Check this out. Pestilence is extinguished. The world becomes smaller. For a long time, the lands will be inhabited peacefully. People will travel safely through the sky, over land and seas. Then wars will start up again. Oh, man. Future sucks. Damn it. There's no robots. It's all peace and then, and then wars start up again. You know what the problem here is? So he's talking about the world shrinking. I think this means that... Um, the population on the planet will shrink. Yes, sir, because robots would have killed so many. This that that is a a very real possibility, and I'm 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 hopeful that that's what he's referring to. But then the wars start up again, which leads me to believe when people travel safely through the sky over land and seas using what I'm presuming to be a, a spaceship. That looks a lot like the one from uh, Flight of the Navigator. Yes, God. How do you read my mind like that? <laughs> Jesus. You're and Nostradamus. I am. I am. It's true. It's true. And that's why I have to debunk everything this fucking fraud says. Because I am the real Nostradamus. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. The problem here is people. We're flying in the fucking spaceship. We're banging away. There's too many of us. And then the war start again because we're fucking stupid humans and we suck. I agree. I saw the Flight of the Navigator spaceship or some type of like Silverhawks flying spacesuit. How this Maybe says- both. Maybe they fly out of, they like jump out of the Flight of the Navigator spaceship and <laughs> have the fucking spacesuit on and fly alongside of it. And it's all in formation and it looks really cool and make a good movie. Or movie sequel. Yeah, yeah. All right, so there's another thing that I threw in here, because it goes with the timeline. Uh, this one is supposed to happen in 2067, and this is called Global Famine. The great famine which I sense approaching will often turn, then become worldwide. It will be so vast and long-lasting that they will grab roots from the trees and children from the breast. That's pretty scary sounding, right? Well, yeah. It's scary sounding. I don't want to eat trees. <laughs> Maybe. I want to live in a future where the trees eat you. Yeah, that's probably what's going to be going on in 2067. Yeah, after the robots take over, trees become sentient. They're like, no, the fucking people are busy flying around in their spaceships and fucking and killing each other. <laughs> we can get to business and take this place well, yeah, over. Yeah, we can take over and then we'll start eating the people. We are the Great Famine. I like it. All right, so in 2069, this is the warnings of global war. See, I I feel like this guy is just all doom and gloom. He's like, you know what? I know that people suck, so if I make predictions about future wars, pretty sure it's going to come to to pass. Show enough. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a sure bet. People are always going to war, so. All right, here we go. Uh, Warnings of global war, 20. 69. The shining deed of the old one exalted anew. Through the south and Aquilin, they will be very great. Raised by his own sister, great crowds, fleeing, murdered in a thicket of Embedded. Now, for this one, I don't know if this is... It's because he's using antiquated names of places, but I don't get uh, global war from that shit at all. You want to read the simplified quote? Yeah, yeah. The shining deed of the newly elected elder will be blown south by the great northern wind. Great halls are raised by his own sweat. Fleeing, he is killed in the bushes of Ambalon. Yeah, that's that it. How is that a global war? That sounds like a newly elected leader gets forced away and murdered outside of his kingdom. Right. Let me take a look in this book and see what he. I'll, I'll list all the books in the show notes and what I used for this. For those interested, it says here, the war begins triggered by the Islamic world. The United States and China finally face up to each other in global, in the global arena. What the fuck ever? 
that that's a grabbing one. I think I don't get. I don't know. I, I, let's look at that again. Shining deed of the old one. The shining deed of the old one exalted anew through the south and the quillen. They will be very. I I don't know. I don't get that one. Yeah, maybe it's because we don't know where these places are. Maybe that would help. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So let's move along to what's called Global War One. This is for twenty. 20- this is not a world war, people. This is a global war. Right. Okay. This is the globe at war, not the world. For twenty seventy, this is when this book. It's, to- this is also not the flat disc war. This mm. is a global war. Round. Notice that round. Global. Three dimensional. All right. Not flat. Of the region subject to the balance, they will trouble the mountains with great war. Captives the entire sex, enthralled in all Byzantium, so that at dawn they will spread the news from land to land. That sounds like some bad shit's going on for sure. He's got to throw sex in there, though, that creepy old man. He meant, uh, here, you read the simplified one. It's not so creepy when the simplified one, though. <laughs> From the region governed by Libra, a great war will come, enough to disturb the mountains. Both sexes will be captured and all Byzantium, so that cries will be heard at dawn from country to country. Byzantium is an ancient Greek colony, so it it later became Constantinople and Istanbul, so that's where he's talking. We all know that song. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Global War Two, twenty seven. Global War Two, the sequel. Yeah, this time it's even globier. <laughs> Sharp weapons hidden in the torches. In Lyon, the day of sacrament, those of Vienne will all be cut to pieces. By the Latin cantons, Macon does not lie. Again, a couple more antiquated names for places. You want to read the simplified version of that? Certainly. Slicing armor is hidden in the torches inside Lyon on the day of the sacred mountain. Those of the Vienna will be put in the mincer by the Latin canton. Canton. By the Latin can. <laughs> by the Latin cantons. <laughs> Macon does not lie. What? I, I don't know. I don't know. So sharp, one says sharp weapons, one says slicing armor, mm-hmm. and one says on the day of sacrament, which you'd think would be Sunday, and one says the day of the sacred mountain, which sounds like it, it's like some pagan festival or something. Hmm. So it's weird that they're, I mean, those are pretty pretty different, but hmm, I don't know. But those in Vienna better look out because they're being put in the mincer. Yep. All right, same year, Global War Part 3. Wait a second. We're having two global wars in one year? Oh, no, this is all... I put them in order, so this is him talking oh, about okay. the same event. I thought, I thought you were like, all right, that one ends. It's time to start a new global war. <laughs> God damn it. We can't let a year go by. Part 3. The dot from the sky will make its extension. Death speaking. Great execution. The stone in the tree... The proud nation restored. Noise, human monster, herds expiation. This one's pretty direct. This one I think you can easily draw to a dart from the sky being a missile. A missile, yeah. Death speaking, great execution. It doesn't get more clear than that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a clear one. But what does it mean? (laughs) What does it mean? Let's move right along to... Global War Part 4, same year, 2070. He will enter, wicked, unpleasant, infamous, tyrannizing over Mesopotamia. All friends made by the adulterous lady, the land dreadful and black of aspect. That one's... So, the Whore of Babylon? Sounds like it. That one's interesting to me, and that's exactly why. Well, they... they yeah, they Babylon's in Mesopotamia. The adulterous lady, Whore... It, Dude, it's just it's it's fan fiction based on revelation. That's all it is. What if he's drawing on something that everybody is going to know, or what if he's just fan ficting <laughs> revelation? All right, he's just he's 
he's the the equivalent of his time period of a, a really bored fan at home. Just the Harry Potter series ended. There's no more Harry Potter books coming out. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to continue the story because I love these characters and I want to see them continue to exist in the world. Therefore, I'm going to write stories about them <laughs> now. And he's like, you know what? I really like the story of Revelation. And I think it'd be really cool if the monsters are still around and, and the Antichrist and that there were lots of wars and, and, and the faithful have to fight. And, and I'm just going to keep writing about that because I don't think John's going to write anything. He's been dead for probably a thousand years or more. It's not plagiarism. It's creative. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm just, I'm keeping it alive. It's not a reboot. <laughs> It's not a reboot. It's just my own thoughts and opinions on something that's not mine. All right, Global War Part 4. Oh, wait, Part 5. And this is the first time it's going to change to 2071. Oh, shit. This whole, this Global War is going. One year, yeah. Another year. Those in the Isles besieged for a long time will take vigorous force against their foes. Those outside, dead. Overcome by starvation, put in greater hunger than ever they shall know. So this one's predicting zombies, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, the, the thing striking about this one to me is the Isles, like a, a description of a place. Yeah, but is it a real island or is it like an island uh, or, or a population like that's separated from everyone else? I think that's a translation thing. I, I think he means Isles, physical Isles. Like, I, I think he's predicting zombies. <laughs> Everyone outside dies of starvation, and then they raise again to no hunger that will never be satiated. Ooh, I like it. That's it. And they will feast on the flesh of their brothers. You nailed it, dude. That's it. There is no global war. We're going to call that the zombie war. Yeah, it's Revelation. And because it's fan fiction, he's got to change the end. So instead of Jesus coming and saving everybody... He's like, oh, oh no, no, Jesus is my story. We got zombies now, motherfucker. He he didn't even put the hero in the story. He fanficted the shit out of it, and he didn't even include the hero. He blew it. He just he just ch- changed it into zombies, made it all nihilistic. He's a fucking emo teenager. That's who that's who Nostradamus was. He was an emo <laughs> teenager that was probably an old man and had no business being a emo teenager. And I didn't even look ahead at the notes, and I see that the next one is about men eating men. So, zombie apocalypse, clearly. <laughs> yes, let's get to that one. This one's the end of the global war, or its aftermath. And they, in this book, they call it the, the end of the Phoenix period. So, here's that one. Last last recording of me doing uh, Dom DeLuise and Donald Trump, I promise. The voice of the rare bird heard on the pipe of the air vent floor. So high will the bushel of wheat rise that man will be eating his fellow man. Now, most of that is some weird-ass mumbo-jumbo, but I sure get the man-eating man part. That's the zombie yeah. war. Yeah. So he's saying that, that our food will become giant so that we can never eat it because it's way too huge. So we'll just eat each other instead and be zombies. Yeah. Because once you taste man meat... You can never have anything else. You'll crave nothing but the meat of a man and also man meat. So that, that's all I got for the global holy third world war. There's, I, it's getting pretty late for you, Mike. I know it is. And we've, I've got a whole nother section on what they say is Nostradamus talking about a U.S. Iraq war. And I don't know if we'll get time to do that. Maybe we can touch on that in another episode, but... It's if you're worried about that shit and you know about Nostradamus again, the dates on that are are wrong too. So I would not be. Oh, oh what a surprise! <laughs> he said it's 2003. I mean, there's problems in there. 2003. Uh, there. Well, 2003, we did go to war with Iraq. Yeah, but it, that's that's. I think that is what he was talking about, not what's happening right now. So if anybody was nervous about that. And believed in Nostradamus. I don't think that's what he was talking about. Who knows? There, there. You can always match up more situations to shit he said. If, like I said in the beginning, if you consider those things matching up, I, I've always been a big fan of of just reading about Nostradamus and stuff like that. And there's, there's plenty other 
really impressive examples of him getting shit right. They said he was like 50-50, which is... You, you, I think you used the example before. If somebody predicts 12 things and get half of it right, that's not shit. But if they predict 10,000 things and get half of it right, that's pretty good. And he predicted a lot of shit. So if he's he's half right... Yeah, but if, if you're just writing fan fiction and, and you're including things that you're already aware of, like you've got a keen sense of, of society and, and the way humanity is, then you can write your fan fiction about any period in time. Like you could have, I'm sure taken his years and subtracted a couple hundred years and you would have gotten, been able to fit it somewhere Definitely. or add a couple hundred years or take a thousand years off. And it was before his time. I, I agree with you, but for me, like I, for him to be correct that much. And, and I mean, for stuff that happens hundreds of years yeah, later, but, but, but correct based on what, there's some like there's based, some quotes. It's based on interpretation. There's some stuff he gets more specific. Uh, like I said, in the I'll put the link to that documentary. There's stuff that, like the London fires, is is pretty clear. Um, there's there's a there's a lot of stuff that's that's very impressive. I talked about the soldiers digging up his grave and seeing the plaque on his chest, which I I read the true story of that. Which that one was more of a rumor, but. The first time his body was dug up and moved to a new place, not disrespectfully or being robbed or anything like that, there was a plaque on his chest that had that date and year on it and stuff like that. But uh, he, I think he's right enough to where you got to pay attention. And I just can't get over the feeling when, when we look at Nostradamus's shit that I think we're just playing it off too easily. I think that he wrote his shit very strangely, very riddle-like. Like a poem, to strict poetry rules, he even said, and a lot of it won't ever be figured out or deciphered or whatever you want to call it. I think that if you play around with it enough, you'll be able to fit into things. But I think you can do that with anything. People who are proven frauds have made millions of dollars doing that, like Sylvia Brown and fucking knuckleheads like that. So, I, I mean, I don't I don't know where I stand with it, but I, I think there's something to Nostradamus. If he would have been able, I don't know why he wrote like that. Not able. I, I think that's the wrong way to say it. If he had chose to write things down in clear form, I think he'd be far more impressive. But that's the thing. Like, I think people are reading too much into what he did. I think that, and, and I think the whole thing, he didn't want people to know that he was a seer because of ridicule or whatever. I, I don't think that that's really applicable here no i really think that he wrote these things and it was and we're seeing it now and we're able to apply it to this to events but i don't think that these are predictions i really think that these are just him writing poetry based on things that he is um that he's seeing or that he has witnessed or things that he understands right there's a couple of letters that he wrote to the king and uh those are those I hadn't read before. I found those at an old faithful uh, source, and I I, ha I have to say that I didn't. I mean, of course, it's a very religious time. Everybody's religious, and he's a mystic and he's a seer. He wasn't a fucking monk or anything like that. He was a doctor, uh, but he was a super duper Christian guy. He he did not like. Uh, See, he was Christian. Yeah, he didn't like Middle Eastern uh, religions. You know, it seemed like you know, and that's. That's before the warning. So he was, was he was pro crusade. Yes, very 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 biased, which kind of changed a lot of 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 the tone for me when it come to reading came to reading his stuff uh, again. But it's just very interesting, very interesting stuff. I think that you can there's there's a lot of stuff that's vague, but there's a lot of stuff that's not, and I encourage people to, to at least check it out. It's very interesting. So are you sick of my Nostradamus impression, Mike? I'll never be sick of that. Like I, <laughs> I want to do a show with Nostradamus now. Maybe, maybe next week we could get Nostradamus on. He'll <laughs> fill in for you. It'll be, it'll be the the Mike and Nostradamus show. I can just he can make predictions and I can tell him they're full of shit and then we'll have a good laugh. I'll just, I'll just give him a, a nice slap and speak in plain English, you son of a bitch. I know you can. Well, that's it, guys. I, I know I'm I'm a shitty wet blanket, but Nostradamus is is not impressive to me. He's about as impressive as Edgar Casey, 
and he's not impressive at all. You don't think Edgar Casey's impressive at all? No. Where's Atlantis, Mateo? Where's Atlantis? Uh-huh. That's just one. That's one. That was like one of the <laughs> biggest ones. Come on. Where is it? Hill Bob's still coming too, guys. Join <laughs> Heaven's Gate, cut your dick off, and wear a tracksuit. We've got these fresh new Nikes. Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. Get yourself a Whatcast t-shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewhatcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.